I'm out of my run. I've been slipping and sliding everywhere. It's all covered in snow and then there's ice underneath. It's great though. Great run so far. Check this out. Wonder what they're doing. Solid run today. I was uh, I was taking my shoes off and about to put them away, and I saw this on my on my shoe. You see that? That's a screw that's uh, wedged in there. I'm gonna have to like twist this thing out. I got a new Chemex for Christmas. The, the old one, the old one has this little wooden thing on there, and it just makes it a real pain to put in the dishwasher. But the new one has a handle instead. So it's a lot easier to one handle, heh, no pun intended, but to also like put in the dishwasher. At 29 years old, this is these are the things that get me excited. Oh. There's nothing like a hot meal and a hot coffee after a cold run. So on my run, I got a, a question that I actually, I get pretty frequently even though I haven't played at the church for, for a while now, I still get the question semi-frequently and it's enough for me to be talking about it now. But the question is for Elevation Church, how do they, how do they run tracks? Like how do they go about doing that? And especially how do they like go about doing that when everybody is like doing the same exact thing at the same exact time across like four, three or four different states. So I figured I would break it down all the way from who runs the tracks to how it gets distributed throughout um, like all the campuses and everything else. First, at all the campuses except for the broadcast campus, the drummer is the one that ends up running the tracks. And how that works is on a normal weekend, you typically get a session sent out from, from Ballantine. It's the same session for, for everybody. You get an Ableton session that's pre-built, emailed to you like Friday or Saturday night, depending on if they make changes for the Saturday night service or not. And then basically all you have to do is download it and just open it up like a normal file and all of the routing and everything is just ready to go. The only thing that you have to do is there's gonna be a male and a female key for all of the songs and you're just basically picking what, who's leading what and adjusting the, the keys accordingly. And in that aspect, it's super, super easy. Just streamlined as you, as you possibly can get it. Then when you show up at your campus, uh, you basically just plug your, your laptop into most of the campuses you use Play Audio 12s. When I was there, they used the Mode 2 Ultralights and they were transitioning to Play Audio 12s. I'm pretty sure all campuses have the Play Audio 12s now, um, but I can't confirm that for sure. Hi. Hi, bud. The next part depends on the campus. Some campuses have rehearsals before run-through or in some campuses just do straight, straight through run-through. And basically, once you're set up, then you're either gonna go into a rehearsal or run through to where you're gonna play, if it's a four song set, you're gonna play three of the songs local, meaning that it's coming from your laptop. And the fourth song is going to be broadcast from the Ballantine location. The first three songs, there's no spontaneity or, or anything. There's literally, you're, you're playing it down to the minute because you want to end your third song the time everybody else ends their third song so you can flip your switch. And if you haven't seen that video, I'll. I've made a video talking about that. You can flip the switch so that you're instantly hearing Valentine's click and cues and everything else and everybody. It's, in theory, it all, when it works, and it works most of the time, it just all works seamlessly and it's like, it's down to the second for that transition. And for the fourth song at Valentine, they don't have the drummer actually running the tracks. They have a separate guy running the tracks. His name's J Mix, is the guy that normally does it, which is kind of funny. Um, but he has his own Ableton session, and there's a million videos talking about his Ableton session on Worship Drummer and a couple of other YouTube channels out there. But anyway, he has his own Ableton session that he controls and he runs that is broadcast to everybody else. And if there's going to be any like spontaneity or like going into different songs or changing arrangements of the songs, it's going to be on that fourth song purely because JMix's setup allows him to do that and the bands don't have to focus on doing that. Like the drummers don't have to worry about having to add an extra chorus or having to pull up a random song 
from, from a library somewhere. It's literally all done by Ballantine, by somebody whose sole job it is to run the click tracks and make those transitions as smooth as you possibly can. That way, the musicians are freed up to just do what they do and, and play, so. That's pretty much it. That's how it was when I was there, and I don't think it's changed very much. I'm sure it's been updated and stuff like that, but when I was there, that's, that's how it was run. <sighs> yeah, if you have any questions, link them down, uh, down below. He's just eyeballing my oatmeal. You don't even like oatmeal. So, we have a, uh, we have a friend that the store she works at is it's, it's closing, and uh, they're giving all like all of their the rest of their inventory away for free today. So, uh, so uh, long story short, we're going to get uh, some free stuff, free furniture. This is the video that that our friend sent us of the store. Literally all of that furniture in that video is free, like brand new, never used furniture. So, we're li honestly, my plan is just to grab as much as we as we can and uh, load our load our car up with new, unused furniture. <laughs> Had to tie my shoe. Okay, this is as close as we could get to uh, the act. It's, it's in a mall, so we're gonna have to carry carry crap up and as close as we could get. That's it, right there. Escalator's broken. <laughs> this is trip one of two. All right, so now uh, we're taking, apparently there's like a service elevator that we have to take to get the uh, to get the other stuff. Or mostly, honestly, I think we're just getting coffee tables and that's it, right? <laughs> Side tables. But they're like, they're super good quality and they're, they're free, so. I'm gonna get this. You want to scoot this all the way forward yeah. and then do that? Okay. We can fit all this. <laughs> if I get all this stuff in, I'm going to be a hero. We managed to get literally everything. We just got like three or four thousand dollars worth of stuff for free. Like that chair was like twelve hundred dollars alone, and we got it for free. I can't believe we fit all of it in the in the car, especially that chair. Okay, so we ended up getting two different coffee tables that I want to try out for that spot in my room. I honestly don't know what one I'm gonna like more. One has more real estate, but one's taller. So that one I think is, might be the, might, might be the one, but this one I have way more real estate to go in there. Honestly, I may just have to try both of them and see what one feels the best. But I will say anything is going to be better than that. That's actually a TV dinner tray from Walmart that you can break down. It's super flimsy. I think I'm gonna try the bigger one first and see how that feels and... Yeah. 
I'll try the other one. I think I made my decision. Okay, so I really do like this guy right here. But the only issue is it's just the size and he's just a little too low for when I'm when I'm sitting here like at the drums like working on stuff. The last thing I want to do is like have to lean over and like actually like do stuff. And this is just a little bit taller to where I don't have to I don't have to lean over quite as much and I still have all this room for this mouse cuz the keyboard's just going to live right there. So all that to be said, I think uh I think that and that's the size of a drum, so it just, it looks a lot better, I feel like, versus like the big, long looking thing. Long story short, I think that's my new table. Also, Savannah's, so this is Savannah's old chair, right here. And now, the new chair that she got, that uh, I was surprised it fit in the RAV4, but it's, it just looks a lot better. I was shocked that, uh, that this thing actually fit in uh, <laughs> the back of our RAV4. I literally just took it this way and it just, it went straight in like like perf like a glove. This thing was like $1,200 and we got it completely for Blows my mind. Okay, so I had a couple requests to do this and I'm gonna go ahead and do it. So a few vlogs ago and I, I used to do it all the time, but uh, I used to do song walkthroughs of sets that I've played, like live sets, and it kind of just basically just tell you my thinking and thought process behind uh, just the songs and the, the live versions of the songs and why I played whatever I played. All that to be said, I'm gonna do that right now. Okay, this is gonna be Sea of Victory. Uh, we're, go we're going into Sea of Victory from a previous song. Here we go. What's that? It's probably one of my favorite outros ever. <laughs> Such a cool drum fill. Intro. So I wanted to keep it super big, and I did a big fill, kind of guiding us into the uh, into the first lead hook of the uh, of the song. I love doing the floor tom and the ride cymbal. It just sounds so good. <laughs> this tom sounded massive. doing just the hands. Left hand on snare, right hand on floor. Intro. Added the kick there, put the accent on the snare. Again, keeping the that hook just big and it, making it feel huge, and giving it a little more uh, that feels cool, and giving it a little uh, more movement. So now the tom part has gone to the kick drum and the snare on the floor. What <laughs> you knows? All right, I did the hi-hat thing to break it up a little bit. Fill into, uh, into that groove. And I'm doing foot splashes just to keep that bigness and keep it like feeling full, even though like my hands are kind of occupied. And trying to do as many crashes as I can that makes sense. Because this is technically a chorus. Chorus? Same thing. I'm adding the snare and the hi-hats a little bit more just to kind of break it up again. Whenever I have like two chords or something like that, 
then I try to like find something in the second chorus to break it up a little bit. Break it down. Now that little bridge thing. I had to pull my in-ear cable up. <laughs> That ride, that crash on my uh, right side sounds so good. It's actually the one that's on the kit right now. Whew. Switch to toms and now foot splashes again to keep the groove growing and feeling like the anticipation is building. Now I'll drive. Now we're huge, and the biggest thing I did was I just increased the volume on my right hand on the floor tom, because I mean I'm kind of almost maxed out. And 16th, uh, I did 16th notes on the hi-hats now, going into a build. Down chorus. Floor Tom I at kick drum build. Probably one of my favorite builds. Now again, the uh, the tom part switched over to the kick drum while I'm washing on that ride cymbal. Let's drive it. Sixteenth note thing. Now I'm doing sixteenth notes on the the hi hats. I'm just trying to take up as much space now while like driving it, and making the energy feel like it's still like way up here instead of ducking down. Especially going from a chorus to a bridge and a bridge outro. Keep playing. Little feel. That, 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 that's such a cool feel. I love doing stuff like that. Again, taking up as much space as I can. All right, so a couple of things, like towards the end, I try to make it really, like we changed the arrangement a little bit and we added a second outro to the song. And because of that, I try to make it really obvious, like by going like, just to make it real obvious that we're actually ending so that we end at the same time. Cause there's nothing worse than us not ending solidly. And it just, it leaves, it's kind of like leaving a bad taste in somebody's mouth. Uh, it's just, nobody wants that. <laughs> And then the other thing is going to be just whenever like there's a chorus, chorus or a bridge, bridge or like bridge times three or something, I try to always like kind of almost up my game as far as like the energy or just the bigness of it. And, and that's mostly just so that the song continues to grow and the song continues to like ebb and flow. And if that means that you need to like drop out for like the first half of a chorus or a bridge like we did, and then bring it back in, That then do that. Just just as long as it doesn't feel stagnant or stale, because that can be distracting too in like a church environment. If it just feels like you're just, if it feels monotonous, then it's not, that's not good. You don't want that. Okay, uh, I'll link that video down below and uh, you can check it out for yourself if you want to. I can't believe we got all that furniture. I love that table. That table's gonna be my new favorite thing for the uh, for the studio. Thank <laughs> you.